everyone, so welcome back. Okay, I'm Shia Wilde. So this is uh, the basics part 2 of absorption costing versus marginal costing. So any if you have any questions on the video, you can email me at wildy231 at gmail.com. So welcome to uh, my channel again. So today, we're going to follow up a bit on uh, the example which you went through the last uh, vid during last, last video. So the example which applies was you know a shop selling a toy cars okay and each toy car would have material cost okay one toy car each toy car will incur material cost of five dollars and then in terms of labor cost would be three dollars we understand that each month this factory would or this shop will make a thousand toy cars and each month the overheads incurred by this shop would be five hundred dollars so as a result of this we understand that the overhead per car or the other term that we use for this is the overhead absorption rate would be at five hundred divided by one thousand which gives you fifty cents per so this was the example we were talking about the last time and today I'm going to uh, explain more about this using uh, my Excel spreadsheet. So uh, why is that so? So that you have a clearer understanding of like what's the implication of using marginal cost versus absorption cost. Let's come to it. Okay, so this is my spreadsheet. All right, and I would like to assume that there are two months. Okay, and for the two months I'm going to be selling exactly the same amount of number of toy cars. Okay? So, let's begin. Alright, uh, this is going to be quite a long video. So, I'm going to cover the marginal cost portion first. Uh. Okay, so let me explain to you. Say in this case, marginal cost method and then you know in month one you made a thousand toy cars you sold all thousand of them what's the revenue that you get thousand times ten you get ten thousand dollars in terms of material cost if you were to make a thousand toy cars then it would be thousand times five dollars total material cost five thousand labor cost would be thousand times three total labor cost three thousand dollars total production cost eight thousand and well the cost of sales would be eight thousand contribution would be two thousand Okay, less your respective fixed costs, fixed production overhead, and fixed administration. Therefore, your net profit should be 300. Contribution margin results in 20%. If the same thing recurs into month 2, it should be also 20% in month 2 uh, in terms of uh, contribution percentage. Now, I would like to bring your attention to absorption cost method. Okay, marginal cost method takes into account that each unit you know, should only account for the variable costs like material and labor costs. However, for the marginal cost approach, the interesting fact here is that if thousand cars are made and sold, revenue should be ten thousand also. Okay, but for the absorption method, the variable costs of uh, raw material and labor would be accounted for in the cost of. Uh, cost of goods sold and it will also include an element of overheads alright remember just now in my calculation each toy car will be 50 cents of overhead if we have a thousand cars being sold that will be a thousand times 50 cents that gives you applied overhead of 500 dollars total um, cost of goods sold will be 8,005 that gives you gross profit of 1,005 gross margin which is 1,005 divided by 10,000 will be 15% it repeat the same the next month where all are made and sold. The gross profit ma uh, margin percentage should be the same as the earlier month. In fact, what's very interesting to see is that, observe, if there are no opening and closing stocks, the net profit from absorption method should be exactly the same as the net profit from the marginal method. Alright? Now let me put the implication here. Let's see what happens if we produce instead a thousand toy cars, but you know we only sold eight hundred. 
so that means revenue will be eight thousand all right and then if that's the case then what would be the closing stock the closing stock would therefore be 200 remaining times eight dollars okay observe here that in month one that the net profit will immediately be negative 100 now if we are to apply the same condition that thousand cars are made but only 200 were sold the other 800 also and we apply that to absorption costing what would be the difference let's see okay so if you use absorption method okay the revenue would still be 8000 okay the cost of production well no change but then in terms of the cost of goods sold would be a bit different okay if you made 1000 but 200 not sold 200 would be a closing stock what would be the cost per unit remember absorption costing will take into account that each unit includes variable and an element of overhead costs so each unit would be five dollars plus three plus fifty cents plus fifty cents now observe here that hey actually net profit is break even compared with the earlier case realize that now what happens if let's say there are even fewer units being sold right would the difference be greater right so let me just put down let's say the only 600 are sold if only 600 are sold then the revenue would be six thousand dollars and then there will be 400 units that will be unsold at what cost each eight dollars each notice that in this case if there are even fewer units being sold the net loss becomes greater negative 500 now watch the absorption method now okay the absorption method is going to be a bit more interesting okay but meantime just ignore the uh, the columns on the right okay i'll cover that in a while just ignore them completely and you hide them okay so now i'm going to expand my example a bit more right so we assume the same for absorption costing let's say six thousand uh, dollars of revenue here as well if only 600 are sold then how many units of closing stocks would that be in this case it would be 400 remaining all right now observe here do you realize that hey the net profit from the marginal cost is actually still a greater negative compared to the marginal cost compared to the absorption cost method the absorption cost method has a smaller uh, net loss compared to the marginal method why because the closing stocks carry a component of fixed overheads and this component of fixed overheads is transferred to the next period unlike the marginal cost method where the overheads are fully treated as a cost within the same month so in this case would it be better to use the absorption cost method well if you look at it like this well in a way it's good because it shows a better uh, or a smaller net loss okay well there is another angle to look at it as in absorption cost is more ideal because it matches cost against revenue in the same month so since those units like of that 400 are unsold therefore the overheads for this 400 will be transferred to the next month as part of next month's opening stocks so the absorption method is in a way more preferred in fact it's uh, allowed by the accounting standards so let me just uh, move on like where exactly does the difference between the two net profits come from or the two net losses come from okay the difference between the two net profits is mainly caused by the difference in terms of the way or the method that the closing stocks are calculated okay marginal cost has closing stock of 3002 as absorption method has closing stock of 3004 okay if you take the difference between the two net profits you realize that the difference is 200 and that difference is exactly the difference between the two closing stocks all right so i hope that that has enlightened you and then uh, because i'm going to use the next video to explain to you what happens if you spread over two months all right so meantime watch out for my next video